Hey everybody, welcome to episode 8A, I think it is. Um, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the series here and just walk through how we align the radio. So um, what you're looking at on the screen is our signal generator. And if you, uh, if you look at our signal generator, you'll see that we're going to be looking for 455. Now how do we know that? Well, on our schematic for this radio, it tells us that the IF is tuned to 455 kilocycles. So if we look at the uh, signal generator here, you'll see that we have uh, six different bands, A, B, C, and D, and E, and F. And um, what we're looking for is 455. So if you look at the, um, if we watch the selector, we'll see that the B line, which is the second line from the bottom, is where our 455 is. And these signal generators generally give you a marking, which this one does is a little triangle right there, which tells you where 455 is. So we're going to put the needle right on 455. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to our oscilloscope. And what I want to do before I do an alignment is make sure that the signal generator is accurate. You know, these things are, are generally needing to be calibrated occasionally, and they're not always accurate. So, um, so we're going to switch over to the oscilloscope. I have it connected directly to the leads of the signal generator. And you're going to see uh, what the frequency really is. So let's, let's switch over right now. Okay. So what you could see there on the bottom where it says frequency, it says 462, 459. So it's, it's jumping around a little bit. So it's definitely off. So we're going to turn this down until we get to 455. We're a little too much there. Let's go back up a bit. 450, 454. Right about there. So we're jumping between 456. Um, we could probably go down just a little more. There we go, 455. So now we know that the uh, signal generator is calibrated where it needs to be. Right? And um, as you can see on the signal generator, we're pretty close to that triangle mark there. So let's get this set up and we'll show you how to do the alignment. Be right back. Okay, so let's get into it. So before we uh, start the procedure, let's show you what equipment we're going to use. First of all, we've got the signal generator, which I showed you in the previous segment, set to 455, calibrated through the oscilloscope. I have the uh, red lead connected directly to the antenna terminal in the back of the radio, and the ground lead is connected directly to the chassis. Also, from a, from a measuring perspective, we're going to use a, um, an RCA senior volt ohmist meter. Here's what, here it is. And this is, a, this is an old analog meter. And the reason why I want to use this one is because it has a low AC scale. A lot of the new meters that you buy today don't have a low AC scale. They start at either 3 or 10 volts. And um, I don't like to use a digital scale when I do this. I want to use something analog. This meter does a great job. So what you'll see here, uh, right here, this line right here is low AC. And we're going to expect to see this needle go anywhere between zero and maybe three volts when we start doing the alignment. We're going to connect this up directly across the voice coil of the speaker. All right, so we've got the, this meter connected directly to the voice coil of the speaker. So um, a couple of rules here before we get started. When you do this, you don't want to have a blaring signal coming out of the radio because what you're going to do is you're going to trip the AVC circuit and you're not going to get an accurate reading. So you want to have just enough sound so you can hear the, the, the signal or the tone coming out of the signal generator. Let's power this up. So the radio's powered up, and you can see uh, the tubes start to glow. And according to the alignment procedure, it says uh, step one and two. Put the high side of the signal generator to the antenna terminal. We've done that. Tune the signal generator to 455. We've done that. Turn the radio dial to the A band, which is broadcast, to a quiet point between 550 and 750. Let's do that. And we're going to go right there on 600. Okay? And I have the volume down pretty low on this thing. You'll see it's loud. Now we're going to turn the, the, um, the fine adjustment on the signal generator down because we don't want it loud. Let's turn that down. 
I'm going to bring the volume up on the radio. Okay. So that's pretty bearable. Um, it's probably a little bit annoying, but that's okay. So what they want us to do is they want us to turn uh, C14 and C15 first. So that's going to be the first adjustment. So right here is C14 and C15. Now we're going to watch the meter and watch what happens when we turn these screws. Here we go. See the needle? We're looking for the highest point. That's too much. We lost it. Right there's the highest point. Now we'll do the other one. That goes up quite a bit. Right there. Now at this point we can turn the find an adjustment down even further on the signal generator. Just enough to hear it. Okay. So the next procedure is they want us to adjust C11 and 12, which is right back here. So let's do that. Watch the needle. And again, we're going to lower the signal generator. Turn the second screw. If I can find it. There it is. Let's see what happens to the needle then. Going up just a little bit there. Okay, good. Oops. We're going to further turn down our signal generator. So you notice how we're not blowing the volume out of this thing. Also, I want to mention, you have to use a non-metallic tool when you do this. If you use a metal tool, like a screwdriver, to turn these screws, you're not going to get a good calibration. So that's broadcast band. So now they want us to do, um, they want us to do the upper end of the dial. So let me get that set up, and we'll come right back and show you that. Right back. Okay, in order to do the, uh, the high bands, they want you to put a, um, a 200 MMF a microfarad, obviously, um, capacitor in line with the antenna connection from the signal generator. So what I've done is I've put a, um, I have a 501K, which is a .0005 in there. So we've done that, and they want us to tune our, um, our signal generator to 1500 kilocycles. Um, Obviously, I've just done a calibration, so um, I didn't have to show you that. I've showed you again. So I've calibrated it on the oscilloscope, and they want us to, um, to turn the dial to the 1500 mark. I'm going to show you a little trick around this radio with that in a moment. So we've got this turned to the 1500 mark. Let's see, put the volume up and see what we get. Okay. And you can see the meter is jumping. So we're getting the signal at 1500, and they want us to adjust C9 and C2. Now on this radio, um, C2 is right here. It's this screw on the tuning cap. And C9 is this screw right here. Okay? Let's move that over so you can see it. There you go. So they want us to do C2 first. Let's do that. See the meter? It's going up. Right there. We'll turn the volume down a little bit. We'll lower our signal. Okay. And then C9 right here. Notice we're picking up a station. Okay. So we've got that set for maximum amplitude at 1500. Then they want us to go back to 600. Not back to, they want us to go to 600. So we're going to go back to that band and we're going to turn the dial to 600.
Okay, and we're not picking up anything on 600. Interesting. Let's raise this up a little bit. There it is. Okay. And they want us to adjust C10. And C10 on this radio is right here. And we're going to watch the meter. It's like that, that pot's a little dirty. right about there. Okay, so our broadcast band is now complete. I'm going to turn off the signal generator. And we're going to connect an antenna and see what it looks like. Okay, now the point here is although this is the factory um, setting that they tell you to do, sometimes it's not good enough. You know, the conditions in which the factory calibrated these things don't exactly match what I'm doing here. Right? Um, there could be a bunch of things that are different. Different voltages, all kinds of different things. So, let's take a look at this here. There's the station I have in the house. That's 800. Now you notice that station's bleeding over as I turn the dial. It's too strong. It's actually taking over the entire radio. So I get that station no matter where I tune. So we're going to come back down here. Shouldn't be here. And we're going to adjust our antenna coil, which is right here. So um, I'm going to, you know, obviously align this off camera um, and get it where back where it needs to be. I've already had it aligned, but I took it out just to show you guys. Um, but that's the that's the trick. And then obviously there's a shortwave um, alignment procedure as well. It's basically just adjusting um, C4, which is uh, right here. So it's on the um, tuning cap. And they want you to set it to 20 millicycles and, uh, and obviously adjust that oscillator. And they want you to do that in series with a 300 ohm resistor for this radio. So um, that's the alignment procedure. It's really simple. And um, you just have to pay, have a little patience and make sure you have a good meter. Again, I'm going to show you this um, RCA Senior Volt Ohmist meter. Really does a great job, especially so, with that low voltage. You know, so far this season is six for eight. You can also use an oscilloscope. It's a little less scientific. I'd rather use the meter. But uh, I hope this is helpful. And remember, don't use a metal tool. Use a plastic tool. And make sure that you check your work afterwards. Just because it says it on the paper doesn't mean that it's absolutely correct. You may have to uh, tune around a little bit. One last thing I want to show you before we wrap the video up, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So let me get that done. Be right back. Okay, now this radio is, is different than some radios. Some radios have the dial glass mounted on the radio. And um, that makes it really easy to figure out if you're aligned correctly. But on this radio, it's not. It's just a metal plate here. So how do you know if you've got the uh, dial pointer aligned correctly? Well, let's take a look at this piece of paper that came with the radio. And you'll see that this is the metal plate. They actually give you marks and scores on the, on the plate that show you where you are. So for example... There's a number one, two, three here, and this is there's a line here that shows you the end of the dial indicator, and I'll show you that in a moment. There's a line here for 600 millicycles, um, kilocycles, I'm sorry, and then there's one here for 1500 kilocycles. So when they tell you to tune to these uh, things when you're doing the alignment, it's marked for you. And then here's 20 millicycles, megacycles. Can't talk today. So let's um, let's take a look at the uh, first of all where the end of the dial should go, and um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, so we're going to do our best. Let's get some light here. Okay. So here's the one, two, three. And here's the line where the dial should go, right there. It's very hard to see. So that's where the dial should be. 
when you have the gang fully meshed. Okay? Then the 600 mark is this line right here. So there's 600. There's another set of lines here which we don't really need. Then we're going to come down here. And that line right there is 1500 kilocycles. So that's how you know. Really, really cool. So uh, if you have a radio that doesn't have a dial glass on it, you'll know that you need to look at that. All right? Hope this is helpful. Um, like I said, in the next episode, we'll have the radio fully aligned and ready to go. And then we're going to look at some ways that we can improve it and make it better. So that'll be coming up in the next episode. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you.